Oh, well, hello everyone. Welcome back to another um, Massachusetts Central Radio Show. Um, I'm your humble host, Mike Camo. I hope you guys are enjoying your. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying your week um, and stuff like that. Um, I before I started the blog. And I started at 11.57, so before I started the vlog, I had to turn on my PS4 because it is doing this whirring noise. Yeah, so it's making a whirring noise. Uh, how can I stop making a loud noise? Um, the reason why it's doing this is because um, it's it's hot up here right now. I think it's working overtime. Usually, when the PS4, I think it's I think it started happening like yesterday. So my PS4, folks, is currently. Um, so my PS4 is currently not not running uh, super super well uh, at the moment. So um, I think it's because its cooling fan is all screwed up, or it's or it's lacking the proper cooling. Um, I'm gonna take it apart on the screen right now. Well, I'm not take it apart on the screen, but I'm gonna look at it on the screen and. Myself here dropping anything on me, um, but yeah, it was making a lot of roaring noise. I think it's because the I I have a feeling it's because of the heat that we are experiencing right now. It is very warm up here uh, in my room, so the car and the and what I don't think is happening is it's not getting the air cooling it needs. So I may have to put a fan on it when I work when I run it, or I'm gonna have to shut it off for a few days and take a look because um, because it's making this weird buzzing noise um, yeah making buzzing noise um, noise arises due to the sheer effort the PS4 fans being just, even doing something is clean and the console moving it can help however you may need to go deeper. Um, yeah, so high pitch rattling or buzzing noise. Um, it's because it's known for being very loud, but I think it's because it's um, the the I had the PS4 on, and when it's on sleep mode, unfortunately, it tends to overreact and what's happening is, is I think the I think I need to put a can of compressed air to it and clear it out because it is starting to really make this worry noise I noticed that when I was playing Crash Bandicoot earlier today I'm gonna have to probably um, I'm either gonna have to put a fan in front of it or something like that because that is the um, the, uh, the PS4 is not in a very well ventilated area. In fact, it's up against a wall. And it's in open air, but it is up against a wall. And I don't know if there's dust on it. I'm going to have to figure out where the fans are and stuff like that. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I was doing before I shot the vlog. Um, uh, but, but, yeah, so... Welcome to the welcome to the most welcome to the weirdest enter MC radio show entrance ever. Me talking about a PS4 buzzing noises and everything. It sounded like I had a hornet inside the console. I hope that's not the case because that is a very weird hornet. And if one flies out, well, I'm in trouble. So um, because I hate hornets and I hate wasps and I hate uh, I hate any bugs that sting. So um, I just want to say, everybody, welcome to 195. 
Uh, happy 195, everybody. I've not launched 194 yet. I'm going to launch both of them tonight. Um, both of them tonight and then uh, upload them. And um, one after the next. Um, it is currently, it is only, actually, it is 12 o'clock, isn't it? It is 12 or 3, so, so like, technically, yes, I did actually do it during the day. I actually did do it on the 21st, so it does count as a vlog um, for the day. So um, I don't know if this is going to be a long one because uh, it's hot. I should have to turn the fan on in a couple of minutes because it's warm. I have a lot of water up here, so I'm, so I'm fine for... Um, so I'm fine for uh, so I'm fine for, um, for for nourishment and water and everything. So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Uh, your start to your weekend. Saturday is definitely gonna be interesting. Um, I'm doing well. It's a little warm. Uh, Indy Indy 500 Fast Friday today. Uh, this is the day they turn up the boost and we get to see just what the cars can really do. Uh, Scott Dixon led the led the Honda bunch. Actually, all actually the first top like six places were all dominated by Hondas, and the no tow speeds were at 231 um, point I think two miles an hour, and I think the tow speeds were at 233.547 miles an hour by Scott. Uh, well, actually, actually 233.302 by Scott Dixon. Uh, or 502 or 302, I can't remember which one. Uh, but yeah, that's over 233 miles an hour, and that is over 372 miles an hour, if I'm doing my math correctly. I think it's 370, yeah, it's 300, and, yeah, 370 is 230. I think it's uh, 200 and uh, 370 plus kph for those of you in Europe. Uh, it is the first time I think I've seen Indianapolis race cars do 230 in my 233, do 233 average uh, lap average in my uh, 233 top speed in my lifetime. Um, the drivers were topping over 239 miles per hour on the straightaways. Um, it seems that uh, folks at Honda has a um, has a has a unique um, has an advantage over. Chevrolet this year, which isn't great because Chevrolet is, you know, my favorite brand. And while I want Dixon to win because he's because he's the current champion right now, um, I also want somebody else to win and um, and actually be able to take uh, the month of May. And I should be able to somebody else to win uh, the Indianapolis 500. I'm hoping it's a rookie this year, and I have a feeling that the Chevrolets are not completely. Um, Showing their hand, I think that I think we'll find in the race. Um, I think we'll find in the race that we will have um, that you know through strategy and stuff like that. We're definitely going to see because I know Rossi, Alexander Rossi, who started. Um, as I know Alexander Rossi, who started uh, deep in the pack, he came up and he won it in two thousand and. He, uh, I think he won in 2015 or 16. I can't remember. And then um, Pagano was the last one to win it from pole, I believe, because he got pole in on uh, for the 2019 edition. I remember watching those last five laps of the 2019 edition. Um, I watched the 2020 edition um, in August because um, – and it was it was kind of kind of exciting because it really wasn't August, and you know it wasn't the month of May and wasn't really good and everything. So yeah, um, so yeah the new so now we have a new top speed um, hit uh, for the month of May uh, with the Indianapolis cars at 233 miles an hour. I'm only going to imagine what those cars are going to be like when they do 100 and when they do 900 horsepower with the hybrids in 2023. We're probably going to see the lap record uh, either fall or get matched. Um, for those of you who do not know, the the record at the Speedway was set by Ari Leinendijk in a Ford Cosworth XB engine car uh, that had 750 horsepower. About around a little less than what the cars are running today. The cars today run about 
uh, 550 on the uh, 550 on the ovals. Although on the um, although on uh, draft day, um, although on fast fast Friday and on the quality trims, they're probably they probably have an extra 45 horsepower. So they almost have 600 horsepower. They don't have 750. They have 750 on the road courses, but they don't have 750 on the ovals because of speeds. Um, they don't think that the cars are aerodynamically the same to do 750 horsepower. In fact, if the way the cars were trimmed out, I don't think they could handle 750, um, let alone any more than that. So they're going to have to obviously test these cars, and they're obviously going to have to change the rear wing profile. They're going to keep these things on the ground because... I am expecting top speeds at the speedway to hit over 240 as the time go as time goes on with these new hybrids um, creating nine up to total up to 900 horsepower. We don't know how that's going to be delivered um, during during the month of May or when they introduced hybrids to the speedway, but I definitely think it's going to be temporary um, boost, and then they're not going to. They're not going to have 900 all the time, but I can tell you that the speeds, when they get the boost right, uh, in the next couple of years, we are going to see lap records fall. I think they're going to keep the, back the engines down a little bit, maybe out of safety. So maybe they're not going to run 900 uh, total right away. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll run 800 and then they'll get up to 900. Because um, I think Ari Leyendijk has been telling has been telling the guys um, at the speedway, please, please run. And he's he's always been like, run a little extra boost so we can so I can be done with the record. He 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 always he hates. Arlinda likes that he had the record, but it's been standing for too long, and um, he thinks that uh, if we do if they do get it um, on the technical side, he do he thinks that they get a little bit more boost. Or if they're, or if the cars, aero packages are changed a little, maybe the cars can stay, maybe the wind can stay in the wind a little bit like the older ones, and that would actually be the way that Ari Landag. For those of you who don't, who don't know, um, his lap record, uh, the the lap speed today by Scott Dixon was two thirty three point, was two thirty three five three oh two. It was, yeah, it was 302. It wasn't 502, it was 302. Um, Ari's average was 236.957, I think. And she, it was 0.975 or 5 or 8. I can't remember what it is. But um, Lion Dyke's record uh, still stands today. He did, uh, on his first run, he did 236. And then I think on his next one, he did 236.9. And then he did 237.2, and then on his last one, he did 237.4. Had he gone 238, he may have had 230, he may 230.89 or something like that. He may have gone 237, but he got 236 nonetheless. Unfortunately, it did not hit him pole because his car was underweight the previous day. So he trimmed the car out, trimmed the car out. He says... They gain a mile an hour on the straight. They gain a mile an hour in the corner. He said they kept trimming the car out. Car wasn't scary. He was able to really push that car to its limits. And uh, it's and uh, Mr. Lyondike was was a very brave, very brave man. He had a set of uh, he had a set of what all guys need to drive that car on the limit at 237. I think they were saying that the car was touching. 242, 243 on the in the corners. It, it was scrubbing off speed very little. I think he only lost maybe, I think he said the fastest he was going was 243, 244. He said he probably only lost, well, he said he was going 241, 242. So he probably lost four or five miles an hour. And uh, he said had he had a little bit extra horsepower, in the uh, indie in the indie car guys that were running an engine that was a year older but more power but but less aerodynamics he he thinks he thinks they would have topped 243 244 
and he actually may have been able to do in the 238, 239 range, which probably would have got him pulled had he not screwed up the, the weights of his car. Uh, so yeah, so that's Indy Day. Uh, so that's Indy qualifying five. I mean, Indy, Indy fast practice five. So tomorrow they're going to be doing the shootout for the pole. Well, not for the sh total shootout for the pole, but they're going for the next two days they're going to be doing the shootout for the pole. I'm thinking the top speed. Um, they don't do. Um, they do individual runs. They don't do runs on top of each other. So my guess is the pole speeds. Weather permitting, um, the pole speed's going to be in the 230 somewhere. I don't know where it's going to be. Um, it could be 231, 232. Depends on what setup they find and whatnot. Um, I have a feeling Penske, um, Pen everybody's saying Penske's, Penske's cars stink right now. Their fastest car was 239, I think. Um, not 239, 239, he'd be on the pole. And his cars would be on the pole. So he, his fastest car was 229. I wouldn't count on Roger yet. Roger for the race, though, because Roger's drivers are very good, and they've been there all. And they've been there all year long. So um, I think Honda's going to give them quite the run. But I have a feeling that. Uh, but I have a very big feeling that uh, Honda is. Honda is definitely fast, but I don't think they're going to have the fuel efficiency. I think what Chevrolet is going to try to do is Chevrolet is going to try to win it on fuel mileage because, yeah, you can go 233 miles an hour, 250, 290, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, actually, the cars aren't capable of 290, so so um, I think the only car that's that, I think the only car that's ever averaged 290 um, ever at Indianapolis. Um, is if you play Gran Turismo and you play that, uh, you play that is that X two thousand and ten Sebastian Vettel thing, the car with like fourteen hundred horsepower. When you do laps like twenty seconds and you do, and the top speeds are like two three hundred and the top speeds like two hundred and eighty, you like you can average two eighty two ninety on those lap times. So um, in terms of uh, terms of lap times but that's a game and it is not realistic so you no know, car has 15,000 horsepower so um I remember winning a lot of races at ease with that car um I would enter cars that were free free to enter and I blew these little and I blew these little crap boxes away but um these little Italian crap boxes away with this thing and it'd be like wow um this is a bad race because I would enter um, because I would enter the car per, in in a pretty low class, and I'd be skate, skating by these things, and I'd be skating by these things. I race somebody online. I I'd, I'd take a Red Bull and I'd be winding them around. We do an experiment. We do like a we do like a fifty lap race on 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 some small little um, beater track, like like beginner course or something like that, and I'd just be and I'd be killing them. And I'd, I'd probably laugh and like, I'd raise somebody in a, in a Fiat 500 with like 60 horsepower. You can only imagine how fat, how many times I passed this guy or bumped into him. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to say, guys, it's going to be an interesting one. Don't count Pen I'm not going to count Penske out because Penske's always there. He's always going to find some way to get up there. And he's, and he's, he's, he's a boy that doesn't, that doesn't uh, give up. He's, uh, he can't cheat anymore. He can't. He can't cheat anymore. To or uh, or uh, read some rule books so he can get the unfair advantage. But I think it's going to be. I think for the Chevy teams, it's going to be fuel mileage. I think yeah, you can go 233 miles an hour, but it's going to be down to fuel mileage because you don't know what the race speeds are. Because for the race, um, they put a little bit more downforce on the cars because the cars are going to be handling in traffic, and the cars are not going to have the same boost. That they did in practice, that they did in the um, aren't gonna have the same boost that they did in fast fast Friday and qualifying. So I think what the Chevys are gonna do, and what I saw earlier in the week with a, a lot of the Chevys can, um, a lot of the Chevys can pull um, some really decent speeds. So and um, a lot of the no toe speeds 
are um, a lot of the new two speeds were Chevrolet so I wouldn't count them out just yet um, it's going to be interesting around race time it's going to be anybody's game so um, I hope I give um, I, I give all my hopes for Team Penske probably one of my favorite teams we'll see who wins it's 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 either going to be it's either going to be Ganassi uh, Penske or Foyt because Foyt might because Foyt has Sebastian Bourdais and a bunch of them as Sebastian Bourdais and a bunch of other people so don't count out AJ Foyt's crew never count out uh, Anthony Joseph Foyt ever he's uh, he's one tough dude and the Texan has always been tough at the uh, at the at the brickyard uh, doesn't matter what what car you put him in and what you, what cars you put him in or you put his teams in He's going to do good because AJ is uh, AJ is one of a kind. He's he's a big boy. He's a Texan, and he's and he can rub shoulders and do whatever to stay ahead of Penske and, um, and Ganassi. And they're all they're all they're all big names. They're the, they're kind of the big three at Indianapolis right now. And then there's a Carpenter Racing. Um, and Carpenter is local. He's another one. He was on the pole. He has a chance. I hope. I if anything, I hope Ed Carpenter does something with it with Chevrolet, so because he's good. Um, uh, there's also a bunch of other ones. Um, so yeah, I hope. Um, I hope at some level, you know, the Chevy guys find find some silver lining because they're going to need to find a way to beat Honda because they're not going to beat them on our right pace. I think it's going to be down to fuel efficiency, tire strategy, and it's going to be down to uh, pit stops. And if there's one thing Penske's really good at at doing, it's it's pit stops. Not saying Ganassi isn't. Ganassi's really good. So is Foyt, because Foyt's been around forever and a day. So, and Ganassi's been around for um, Ganassi's been at the in the game for like 20, 30 years. There's also Ray Hall Letterman. Um, he's also been in it for a long time because Ray Hall himself has raced. Um, Ganassi, I don't think drove. Foyt, I think only Foyt and Ray Hall are the only ones that have done anything. And uh, you know, it's um, it's sad that they're uh, concentrating on their Indy program and not their BMW program right now because their BMW program is one of their biggest highlights. But um, we'll we'll have to see what they do because the next time the BMW guys race is, I think, in, I think so. Watkins going in late June, so. Um, or July, I can't remember. Um, but, but yeah, everybody, um, I'm gonna do this one to do. I'm gonna get to bed very soon. Well, I'm gonna watch a little bit more TV and I'm gonna get to bed. I'm gonna upload both of these when I get back upstairs after I get my after I get my body ready for bed. So, um, I hope everybody enjoyed their enjoys their weekend. Um, for those of you who want to tune into Indy qualifying or listen to it on the app, you guys can listen to it on Peacock. I don't have Peacock because I'm not gonna pay out for it. Um, everybody, I bid you guys a good night. I will see you guys later. Um, long live America. Long live this great country. Long live our freedoms and our rights. Uh, amen to all of our spirits. Um, and everything. Let us get through COVID as best we can. Um, uh, pray for the souls that we've lost either to COVID or to natural causes or to whatever caused it, uh, pray for, you know, April's grandmother, pray for, um, good friend of mine, pray for Terry Eaton's, uh, and, um, Terry Eaton's one of my bosses at Target, one of my very good bosses at Target, um, pray for, for the soul of her loved one, I forget who, I forget who died, but I forget if it was the mother or the father, I think it was the father, actually. Um, also pray for my friends, let them all stay strong, let them overcome their obstacles, and when this ends, hopefully we can, well, when this ends, we can all meet, first and foremost. So, peace out everybody, I will see you guys later, good night, and this ends the broadcast for today, thank you folks.